to get a feel for the Cayley-Hamilton theorem, we first run through the two by two case. So our theorem states, F is any field. Since we're doing linear algebra, we'll insist on a field, but in general, this will be true of the commutative ring. We let A be an n by n matrix with entries in our field. We form the characteristic polynomial. So we take determinant of lambda i minus a, gives us a polynomial degree n. We regard our polynomial as a matrix polynomial by replacing lambda with a, multiplying a zero by the identity matrix. Then the Cayley-Hamilton theorem states that this polynomial in A is gonna be equal to the zero matrix. Now, in the two by two case, we get a nice formula. So, if I have A equal to A, B, C, D, I form the characteristic polynomial, we get lambda squared minus the trace of A times lambda plus the determinant of A. Cayley Hamilton then states, A squared minus the trace of A times A plus the determinant of A times I is equal to the zero matrix. Since we're in the two by two case, we could show our result directly. So if I let A be equal to A, B, C, D, we take A squared, I take minus trace of A times A, and I take determinant of A times the identity matrix, we add, and then we note what comes out is the zero matrix. For some concrete examples, so first I'll start over the reals. So I'll let our matrix be two, one, three, four. Our trace is six, our determinant is five. So I look at the polynomial a squared minus six a plus five i. When we work that out, we note outcomes are zero matrices promised. If we use a different field. So say I try F equal to Z mod three. I'll use the matrix A equal to two, one, one, one. Then the trace is two plus one, which is equal to zero. The determinant is gonna be equal to two minus one, which is one. Here, we consider the polynomial A squared plus zero A plus the identity matrix. So when we work this out, I'll have, okay, twice the identity, plus one times the identity gives me three times the identity, which gives me zero. As a nice application of our result, could express any polynomial in A as a linear combination of A and the identity matrix. Now, if we isolate the A squared in our equation, here we have A squared written as linear combination of A and the identity matrix. So the idea is gonna be, if I have a polynomial in A, we could keep reducing our powers recursively till we get down to A and the identity matrix. So let's look at an example. So if I have A equal to one, two, one, one, trace of A is two, determinant of A is minus one. Then I have A squared equals two A plus the identity matrix. So we could see this explicitly. Now, if I want to compute A to the fifth power, Let's do it without ever doing an actual matrix multiplication. So I'll write a to the fifth as a squared squared times a. A squared, I can replace with two a plus i, and then we expand. So that'll give me four a cubed plus four a squared plus a. I'm gonna write a cubed as a squared times a, and then we'll take both a squareds, replace them with two a plus i. That gives me another polynomial. Here, we take this a squared, we write it as two a plus i, and then we note we've gotten everything down to a linear combination of a and the identity matrix. So we have 29a plus 12i. Now, if we put in for a in the identity matrix, okay, we work this out, and we get 41, 58, 29, 41. Of course, we wanna check that. So we'll just take a to the fifth power, so I already have a squared, so let's do a squared times a squared times a. And when we work this out, we note this is gonna check our work. 